But the source-based essay is very specific to the Praxis Core exam, Praxis Core writing. Now for the source-based essay, you are, let me just darken my, my pen here. It's two humans, no, no computer, okay? And again, if they agree within one point, your essay is scored and you move on with your life, okay? If they don't agree with one, with, within one point, excuse me, a hu another human is brought in to um, be the tiebreaker, okay? The thing that you should know about this is that it's a very unbiased way to grade essays. It costs more money to do it this way. Um, and and uh, FTCE does not do it this way. FTC only gives you two graders and whether they agree or disagree isn't, isn't the point. They, they just take the score. But for, um, for Praxis, they bring in this tiebreaker here because, you know, there's too much discrepancy between grader one and grader two, and they want to make sure that it's fair and unbiased. So they bring in that third grader. Um, and I think that's great. So, um, you know, all you have to do is is uh, think about your, your organization and all of that. You should be good, but it's good to know who's grading it. Again, the steps to the source-based essay are the same. You're going to type your thesis statement. And for the source-based essay, your thesis statement is gonna be so easy. You can actually kind of memorize the way you're gonna write your thesis statement. And all you have to do is plug in the topic. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. You're going to map your essay, just like we talked about before. You're going to write your detailed paragraphs, like we said before. Then you're going to proof your details, your body paragraphs. Then you're going to write your intro. Then you're going to write your conclusion. And then you'll proofread the entire essay. So the same steps. This writing method really helps just to stay on track and to make sure you have enough time. However, if you're like, I don't like it this way, totally fine. You don't have to do it this way. You can modify this, but I do recommend practicing. Okay. Definitely practice. And when you receive this, um, this handout, these, these presentations, um, you've already received the, the writing prompts, so you can get those, but I would, you know, write to these prompts when you're done. I know I already wrote it, but you try to do it with different ideas and that'll really help you there. Okay. All right. So, this is what the source-based prompt is going to look like in the, um, in the Praxis writing exam, okay? So we've got artificial intelligence is progressing rapidly, AI, okay? Let me just make sure. So we're talking about artificial intelligence. While science fiction often portrays AI as robots with human-like characteristics, AI can encompass anything from Google's search algorithms to autonomous weapons. Many people believe that AI is not malevolent because it is not likely to exhibit human emotions, okay? Saying that it's a bad thing. Many people do not believe AI is a bad thing. Um, however, others fear that AI will become conscious and destroy us. I mean, there's a lot of people who believe that and it could happen, or it will land in the wrong hands and be used for evil purposes. Both of the following sources address whether or not AI could be harmful in our society. So here's what happens. They give you this long kind of narrative about AI or anything. It could be about cell phones. It could be about um, giving criminals the right to to vote, you know, giving ex-felons the right to vote. I have seen prompts that have to do with um, whether dress codes should be used in school. It's, it's some sort of um, issue. And then they give you kind of a synopsis of the issue. Then below that will be your directions. What is your task? Just like in the argumentative, we had that task in the bottom. And here's your task. Read the two passages carefully, which I'm going to show you in a second, and write an essay in which you identify the most important concerns regarding this issue. Explain why they are important. Your essay must draw on information from both sources. In addition, you may draw on your own experiences, observations, or reading. Be sure to cite both sources. Now, some people think that this is harder than the argumentative essay. I disagree. Now, you're going to get something like this, and I'm not going to read this to you. Don't worry. 
You definitely don't want that. But this is what the sources are gonna look like. Basically, you have two people. Let me switch my color here. You have this person and this person, and they're both um, talking about AI. Immediately, I wanna find out who agrees and who disagrees or what the difference between the two are. We have two people and they are going to disagree, okay? So I wanna figure out who says yay and who says nay. A great way to do that is to look at the title. Notice the title for this person, and again, you may have to zoom in here, let's zoom in. The title for this person says, is artificial intelligence dangerous? Six AI risks everyone should know about. So it sounds like um, Mar B thinks that AI is risky. So Mar B right here, Mar is the last name, B is the first initial of the first. This is an APA formatting. You don't need to know all that. I'm just telling you that. You don't have to have like a degree in APA formatting. But he is going to talk about the risk. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here and look at the last sentence just to give me an idea. And it says, any powerful technology can be misused. Unfortunately, as our AI capabilities expand, we will also see it being used for dangerous, malicious purposes. So this guy is anti-AI. So I'm gonna put anti-AI there, okay? Now let's go over here to the other one. Most likely, and this happens on the exam, the other person is going to disagree or it's gonna be an, a differing of, opinion. This is from the MIT Technology Review in 2018. And in the title, it says AI, a force for good. Okay, so now we know MIT thinks AI is good. And this particular uh, article is going to support it. Now, the reason why this source based um, writing assignment is so awesome is because you have all of this information to reword and use. You don't have to come up with anything on your own. With the argumentative essay, you have to come up with personal experiences, you have to figure out what's going on, you have to make a definitive position and all that. For this, all you're doing is summarizing this person's points and you're summarizing this person's point. And the four paragraph essay lends itself very well to this because your intro is gonna be, we'll talk about it, but you're gonna use a little bit for your intro when it's time, you're gonna use this paragraph here to help you write your intro, that first kind of, in, um, that first piece of the source-based prompt where they introduce the topic at hand. All you have to do is reword this and it's a great intro, do not copy it. We don't wanna copy. We wanna reword and use it, you know, use different words, Maybe instead of saying anything from Google search algorithms, maybe you say Facebook's uh, data collection or something like that, you know, to change it up. But all you have to do is change this up and that's a good intro. We'll get to that when we write our intro. All right, so step one, define our thesis. Identify the argument. This is how you're going to do it. And with this, you can have a canned thesis statement ready to go for any source-based essay. Here's my thesis statement. Artificial intelligence is seen both as an opportunity and as a threat. If this were dress codes, it could be dress codes in school are seen as both discriminatory and necessary. Um, if it's cell phones in schools, it could be cell phone use in schools can be both beneficial and detrimental to the classroom. Do you see how all I do is take the topic that we're talking about and then I say it's a little of this and it's a little of that. That's it. That's all you have to do with your thesis. And you can apply that to any um, anything that you need to for this particular prompt and for others, okay? All right, so now we are going to um, map. Now, I'm not going to get into this too much because I have to go in here and read all of this, but what you're going to want to do is for your map, for your first detail paragraph, you are going to come up with all the things that this person is saying right here. You're going to pull some of the most important information. You can see that he says here, AI programmed uh, to do something dangerous in terms of autonomous weapons we have here. Um, we have 
uh, might have with an individual government. Um, once deployed, they would likely be difficult to dismantle. Those are important things to think about here. Um, since machines can collect, track, and analyze every, uh, everything about you, it's very possible for those machines to use it against you. So this is the data, tracking and data. He also goes into talk specifically about China's social credit system. And that's where they kind of give you a score on <laughs> what you're doing. It's pretty invasive. They, you know, do you smoke? He, he, he puts it here. Have you been seen smoking? Um, do you play too many video games? And it kind of gives you a social score um, based on your AI score. So that could be something that would be detrimental. So those are things that I might put in my um, map. So let's do that. I read it and I say, okay, first thing I want to do is remember who is this? It is Mar 2018. So I'm going to make this person Mar 2018. And that's how I'm going to cite him or her. That's APA. You can also just say Mar at the end, and I'm going to show you how that looks like. But Mar 2018 basically says that AI is bad. Autonomous weapons. Autonomous weapons. Look, if I spelled it incorrectly, don't hate. It's just the way it is. I'm a terrible speller. Um, AI, uh, autonomous weapons, also data collection, social score. Now remember, I can still reference my, my thing here. I don't have to write down every detail. I just wanna kind of figure out what I'm gonna talk about because I can then go back into this source and use specific details. So you don't have to get too specific in your mapping session here, okay? Now, detail paragraph two is gonna be MIT. You can um, abbreviate MIT 2018. I'm so sorry, my handwriting, you guys. I promise to get better. MIT 2018. And in this case, let's go and check out what MIT says. So MIT is gonna be that it's good. We have AI has democratized many services. Um, it has the capability to predict and prevent many kinds of risks. So he's saying it's good. He talks about finance, um, offers opportunity for undeserved segments of the population. All right. So it helps people who normally can't get uh, financing, get financing. How? Uh, track their credit history. AI can understand patterns based on apps people use and help to help them build their credit. Very good. AI programs can improve student outcomes. This is good because we're, we're educators. So student outcomes, it can be used in student homework programs to respond and adjust to learning needs. We see that a lot as teachers. Um, if you answer the questions correctly, it bumps the complexity of the question. So that's always good. Then we have it in hospitals. Uh, doctors can see up to 200 patients a day. They need to kind of track them and, and use their data to help in terms of their pre-diagnosis, post-hospitalization, all of that. And then we have this last thing here. AI isn't going to rise up and take over the world. It learns what we teach it. And we're teaching it that we want our future, what we want our future to look like, flexible, efficient, and highly productive. Okay, cool. So let me just map that out right here. Um, he talks about hospitals. He talks about credit and finance. And he talks about uh, education. Okay, so that's it. I've read it. I know you don't even have to read the whole thing. Notice how I kind of skimmed through it. If you sit there and try to read that whole thing, that's going to take up valuable time. Go in there, pull out those words. You already know that one guy isn't isn't for it. He doesn't or she doesn't like AI. And MIT likes AI. All you got to do is grab some specific details from there. You do not have to read it from top to bottom. Okay. All right, so now we have type the details. Now, I just wanna go through this quickly so you understand how I cited and everything else, okay? Right away, I get to the point. Don't start beating around the bush. In his article, is artificial intelligence dangerous? Uh, Mar, 2018, argues that AI poses many dangers to our society. We know that, we, we could get that from the, the title and we could get that from the last sentence. 
Not only is there a concern that autonomous weapons might gain a mind of their own and put it in quotes if you took it from him or her and become unstoppable, extra cameras and facial recognition algorithms in countries such as China are already tracking per people's every move. Um, as the author states, and then I put it in quotes, when Big Brother is watching you and then making decisions based on, on that intel, it is not only an invasion of privacy, it can quickly turn into social oppression. Notice I grabbed an entire quote here, which just bulked my essay up. That's his words, not mine. They said, to quote directly from the article, I took the main points, I said it poses a threat to our society, and I mentioned autonomous weapons and the China thing. And then I wrapped it up with a, with a, um, a kind of a, a, an impactful quote that kind of hits you at the end. And then what did I do? I cited him right here, Mar 2018. You gotta cite. All you do, last name, comma, date, and you're good. They did, in, um, in this particular part here, I say in his article, and then I name the article and I put it in quotes. The reason why I put it in quotes, and I know people ask, should it be in quotes or not? If you have the option to italicize, I personally like to italicize um, titles of things, but you may not have that option. It depends on what program they're using. So quotes will work as well if you're doing a title, but also italicize works. You're not gonna get marked off if you use one or the other, but use one or the other. Don't italicize and quote, use one or the other. And notice I've got him quoted here. I've got him cited just like it says in the test specifications, okay? Now let's go to detail paragraph two, which is the third paragraph. In an imposing view, outlined in the article, and then I named the article by MIT, AI has the capability to predict and prevent many kinds of risks, thus improving day-to-day -day life. That was a direct quote. Its benefits can already be seen in industries such as finance, education, and healthcare. That came directly from the article. I did not make that up. It was said to me from MIT. In finance, the use of AI, and right here, I just summed up what he said about finance. Then I go in education, AI programs can be used to provide individuals individualized needs. Summed it up from his words, or it's not him, it's MIT as a, as a collective. Additionally, AI can be used in hospitals to collect information. Those are the main points that the author talked about. So that's really important. And then at the end, I do another quote. It learns what we teach it, and we're teaching it that we want our future, what we want our future to look like, flexible, efficient, and highly productive. And then I, then I, um, then I quote, or then I cite MIT Technology Review 2018. That's it. Didn't make any of that up. Didn't have to come up with that myself. Basically took what the MIT article wrote and put it in my own words. That's why the source-based essay for me, like in my opinion, is 10 times easier than the argumentative because you don't have to make anything up. It's all right there. You just reword it and, and cite. That's it. And they're assessing your ability basically to take research and make, you know, and, and present it because that's what you're going to have to do as a teacher. It's actually a really good writing task. I know you don't like it because it's hard, but I really like this essay task because I think it's fair. And I think that it really provides, especially for ELs, people whose language, first language is not English, this can help you. I think this helps to reduce the bias because you have a lot of information to pull from. And um, I, I, I like it. I think it's a great task. All right, step four, we're gonna proof top to bottom. I'm not gonna do that now, but I would start here and read all the way down. I will not add anything. I will not try to reword anything. I'm just looking for any problems and fixing them. Same thing, I'm gonna proof the second details paragraph where I go over the MIT article, make sure it's cited and all of that. And then I'm gonna write my intro. Now, the intro is gonna come from this piece up here when we talked about the, the um, topic, when they put the topic in front of you, okay? So let's go in, sorry about that. Here's the intro. Artificial intelligence is a technology that has gained a lot of attention in our society and has become a topic of heavy debate. 
You could can that as well. It could be dress code policies have become a topic of debate among educators. Some believe that AI can potentially have negative effects. Some believe dress codes negatively affect students of color and uh, girls. Even more people fear that it will fall into the wrong hands and destroy the world. Or destroy, destroy the world. If this were dress codes or any other thing, I could say other people feel that dress codes are necessary in order to keep the school uh, appropriate or whatever you want to say. And then we have here, artificial intelligence is seen both as an opportunity and a threat. If this were dress codes or anything else, I could say dress, uh, dress code policies are seen as both a necessity and discriminatory in schools, or I would say both necessary and discriminatory in schools. And then I would go into my detailed paragraphs. All right, and then I'm gonna write the conclusion right after I write the introduction, which is going to feel repetitive, but it's not going to read repetitive because when the reader gets it, I'm gonna have my intro, then my detail paragraphs, then my conclusion. But it just makes it so much easier to write this way if you write the intro and the conclusion together. And we have the issue on whether or not AI is good or bad for our society will continue to be disputed by many. If this were dress code, I could say um, dress code policies, whether they're good or detrimental, will continue to be debated among educators. It is no question that AI can bring many advantages to our society. However, and I would probably take out our, that I would proof for that and take out our and just say to society because our just switched to first person and I wrote this entire essay in third person. And so that's a good, um, that's a good non-example. That's a good issue. We want to take that out because we just switched perfect perspectives and point of view. We don't want to do that. We want to maintain a consistent point of view. However, it has potential to cause a lot of damage as well. More research will need to be done in order to determine whether or not AI can pose a serious threat to our society. If this were dress code policies, more research needs to be done on whether or not dress code policies are detrimental or beneficial to schools. It could be anything. This conclusion can be adapted to literally any main issue that you're discussing in any essay task. So I highly recommend you kind of figure out how you're going to write your conclusion and get it down in a formula. Just plug and play. That's all you have to do with our formulas. Just figure out what's going on in your specific prompt and plug it in here. Okay. And then your final step is going to be step seven. And that's to proof from top to bottom. Again, we are not adding anything. We are not you know, to, oh, I forgot this one thing. No, 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 no. If you forgot it, that's good. Leave it out. When we talk about essays, less is more. Okay. Less is more.